Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. This is the San Francisco Boys Chorus. song from the 16th century in a modern arrangement. We'd like to sing a little choral number by Mozart now. It's called Santa Maria Mater Dei, Holy Mary, Mother of God. Thank you.
accompanist Charles Calhoun. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We'd like to sing a short song by Benjamin Britten called A New Year Carol. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that was a piece by local composer um, uh, called Alleluia. David Conti is the composer. He teaches at the Conservatory of Music. And now, in a little more in a holiday spirit, this is a number that I'm sure you will be able to recognize right away.
Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we are having a series of uh, public concerts, holiday concerts. We've just done our own holiday concert last Saturday at Mission Dolores. And at the end of this week, we are appearing at the big concert hall at Stanford. And then on the December the 21st, please come to Oakland Cathedral, the beautiful <coughs> Cathedral of Christ the Light, where we are having our final holiday concert of the season. We would like to present a little song called A La Puerta del Cielo, At the Gate of Heaven. It's a little lullaby that we sang on our recent tour to Costa Rica. And we were commend, commend, commended on our Spanish pronunciation. So this is your chance to check it out. We are happy to say also that uh, on December 23rd and the 25th on KQED TV we'll be broadcast our half hour holiday program. So please check it out if you've got the TV on that night, it's around seven o'clock both nights. And we want to thank you this afternoon for being such a supportive audience and we'd like to finish off with a little medley of holiday tunes which has a chance for you to sing as well. So we're looking forward to hearing you. Thank you very much.
to the 2014 Tree of Hope celebration. Please welcome our hostess for the evening, the fabulous Donna Sachet. Talk about fabulous, let's hear from the San Francisco Boys Chorus. Artistic Director, Ian Robertson. Thank you. What a great start to the evening. For eight years, a tree has risen in the rotunda of City Hall. For eight years, this chorus has sung for us. For eight years, many of you have come, but the group keeps getting bigger every year. And for eight years, I've tried to find a dress appropriate for this hall. I love making appearances at City Hall because they're high ceilings. You can wear whatever you want. But today they put carpet. Usually that marble floor is terrible, but this time we have carpet. We want to welcome all of you here. I don't know if you're city officials or if you're just citizens of the city, if you're kids or adults, everybody loves the holiday season. And what we do in San Francisco is unique. We put up a world tree of hope. Just look at the size of that tree, thanks to the Delancey Street Foundation every year. Let's hear it for them. And now to keep the music going, we have two of San Francisco's own jazz vocalists, Veronica Klaus and Josh Clip. Come on up. And Kelly Park. Thank you, Donna. Hello. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Make the Yuletide gay. From now on, our troubles will be miles away. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Make the Yuletide bright. From now on, our troubles will be out. Happy golden days of your faithful friends who are dear to us gather near to us once Through the years, we all will be together if the fates allow. Until then, we'll have to muddle through. Oh. 
happy golden days of yore. Faithful friends who are dear to us, gather near to us once more. Through the Together, if the fates allow, hang a shining star upon the highest bough, and have yourselves a merry little Christmas now Thank you Josh know the words of this one. <laughs> Whoa. Sleigh bells ring, are you listening? In the lane, snow is glistening. A beautiful sight, we're happy tonight. Walking in a winter wonderland. Gone away is the new bird. Here to stay is the bluebird. Sings a love song as we go along, walking in a winter wonderland. In the meadow, we can build a snowman and pretend that he's Parson Brown. He'll say, Are you married? We'll say, No, man. But you can do the job while you're in City Hall later on. We'll conspire as we dream by the fire to face unafraid the plans that we made, walking in a winter wonderland. Walking in a winter wonderland. Walking in a winter wonderland. <laughs> Kelly Park. That was Josh Clipp and Veronica Klaus with Kelly Park on the piano. Thank you all. Very nice. If you want to see more of Josh Clipp, he is going to, he and his group, the Cliptones, perform at the Palace Hotel every Friday in December, and they'll be there New Year's Eve. And if you want to hear more of Veronica Klaus, you can do that as well. She will be at Russell, uh, Russell Lawrenson's Christmas show, December 14th, at the Paina Lounge, and that's, uh, look out for her new Peggy Lee songbook CD, also Lee a la V in the new year. One more hand for both of them. Now, in a minute, we're going to have someone very important because you probably think I'm the first lady of San Francisco. <laughs> Only unofficially, there is a Mrs. Lee. I'm not she. But we're going to have a lot of important people up here. But who's more important than the person that created this tree, who founded the organization that supports it? That's my next opportunity to introduce him, Jeff Cotter, the founder and executive director of Rainbow World Fund, the organization that creates this beautiful holiday tree every year, the World Tree of Hope. Jeff founded Rainbow World Fund 12 years ago out of his own personal desire to create a better world and to tap into the strength of the LGBT community to help others. Rainbow World Fund is a powerful force, force for our community's compassion and concern, helping others by promoting LGBT philanthropy with global humanitarian relief. Since 2000, they have distributed over $4 million in humanitarian aid to communities in need across the world. Please welcome Jeff Cotter.
Thanks, Donna. I feel like I've stepped into a fairy tale tonight. <laughs> Absolutely gorgeous. Um, if you're new to Rainbow World Fund, we're an international humanitarian aid agency based in the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and friends community. So we're gay and straight people coming together to help heal the world. Thank you. We work within our community to educate ourselves about what's going on in the world, and as we raise our community's consciousness, we raise funds to support all kinds of different humanitarian aid work. We focus on landmine eradication, hunger, safe drinking water, global HIV, and disaster relief. We support projects ongoing in Cambodia, Haiti, Honduras, Guatemala, South Africa. Uh, we also have helped out in a number of natural disasters, such as the um, uh, big tsunami in Southeast Asia a few years ago, the earthquake and tsunami in Japan a couple years ago. Right now, we're f uh, fundraising for uh, the typhoon survivors uh, of the Philippines. Um, so, <laughs> all kinds of uh, great work. And uh, we're all about expressing, expressing the compassion of our community. Um, during Hurricane Katrina, we delivered one million pounds of food aid. So um, thank you. So besides providing humanitarian aid, we've learned that it's equally important to foster a spirit of hope in people's lives, if not, if not more so. And we try to do that in all of our international projects. And eight years ago, we thought we need to foster and inspire hope in the United States. So we came up with uh, the World Tree of Hope. And the World Tree of Hope, it's the largest origami decorated tree in the world. And it's called the Tree of Hope because all of the cranes on the tree are inscribed with people's wishes and hopes for the future of the world. Mayor Lee and I put out a um, invitation that goes out virally and we ask people to think about what they want for the future of the world and to share it with us. And people send in wishes through snail mail and through email, and we end up printing them out, folding them into cranes, and symbolically giving their wishes wings. Um, so that's a little bit about the tree. Um, we'll be, we're continuing to decorate the tree with origami throughout the month of December, so if you want to uh, send in a wish, please do that. Just go to our website, which is Rainbow Fund. Dot org. And we also create this, the tree as a symbol of global unity because we feel that is, we need to be unified to uh, change the world and create a beautiful world, which I think that's what we all want. And we give the tree to the world as a gift from the LGBT community. So, Merry Christmas. <laughs> And now I'd like to introduce uh, Karen Kai. She's a board member of Rainbow World Fund, a community activist, and she served on the boards of local, statewide, and national Asian American civil and human rights organizations. She's a former chair of the San Francisco Human Rights Commission, and she served as co-chair of the LGBT Advisory Board. Welcome, Karen Kai. This tree is more than just a beautiful art piece. It comes from the heart and souls of many volunteers, people from all over the world who have sent in wishes, thoughts, shared their dreams and hopes for a better world. And we use the form of the origami crane because it has meaning. And that meaning goes back to Japanese legend. And there is an old, old legend that says, if you fold a thousand paper cranes, if you have that patience and perseverance, out of that effort will come the fulfillment of a wish. 10 years after the bombing of Hiroshima, the first time a human city was destroyed by a single weapon. A young girl who survived that tragedy 
was admitted to the hospital in Hiroshima, suffering from leukemia. Her name was Sadako Sasaki. Sadako had heard this legend, and she began folding paper cranes. And as people started to meet her and hear about her, they started bringing her little pieces of paper, a candy wrapper here, a bit of gift wrap, to help her build her dream. Because, of course, she wanted to be restored to health. But as Sadako started to meet these people and receive their generosity, to converse with her fellow patients and share their concerns and their family's concerns, her compassion grew, her ability to reach out to the world. And each crane became not just a wish for health, but a wish for the world to be a place where all children could grow up in health and peace. Sadako died, but her classmates could not forget her dream. And they began to find ways to create things in her memory, one of the most lasting of which has been the Peace Memorial in Hiroshima's Peace Park. And each year, people send thousands upon thousands of cranes, some of which, like our tree here, have wishes inscribed upon them. This coming together, this saying, we can take the simplest of objects, a piece of paper, and make it into a symbol of hope, of sharing, of humanity, a symbol for all of us to join together is the spirit of this tree. And tonight, we all share it with all who shared a wish, all who helped build it, and all who will come and see it and appreciate its beauty and what we all share together as one human family. Thank you. We live in a magical place. I don't know if you know that. I always say there's something in the air or the water in San Francisco. I'm going to keep breathing it and drinking it because I love living here. Do you? And one of the symbols of that uniqueness is that I get the pleasure now of introducing San Francisco Mayor Ed Lee and Consul General of Japan, Masato Watanabe. This is Mayor Lee's third time officiating the tree lighting. He's been a supporter of the project since its beginning. Consul General Wat Watanabe is appearing at our tree for the first time. He just began his post here in San Francisco for the great country of Japan. Tonight, the Mayor and Consul General will be sharing their hopes for the world and will be exchanging origami cranes as a gesture of friendship and goodwill that has gone on for the past eight years. Please welcome the Mayor of San Francisco, Ed Lee, and Consul General of Japan, Masato Watanabe. Thank you for that introduction, Donna, and welcome everybody to City Hall, the People's Palace. Well, I wanted to welcome personally everyone for you coming tonight. This is, of course, one of my uh, favorite times of the year, and especially when they put this beautiful world tree up of hope in City Hall. It, everyone wants to come here and uh, gather the, not only the holiday feeling, I think the feeling of sharing, the feeling of spirit of people, um, kind of like a year-round bat kid time of feeling. Uh, but I want to just express my personal thanks uh, to uh, Jeff Carter, uh, Carter and Karen Kai, who have been leading this effort now eight years in a row with our uh, Rainbow Tree of Hope. Uh, Jeff, for his wonderful leadership at the Rainbow World Fund, uh, carrying out this project with uh, his love for people. Uh, and as you know, uh, the Rainbow Fund has now reached the pinnacle of distributing over $4 million in humanitarian aid on behalf of the LGBT community to people all over the world. That is a marvelous accomplishment, Jeff. Thank you very much. It's exciting to see many prominent members of our community here. I want to thank uh, Anne Lamott for your presence here. Uh, Dr. Clarence Jones had the privilege of joining you and 
celebrating, remembering Dr. Martin Luther King, and uh, certainly I think it's even as more meaningful as we celebrate the life of Nelson Mandela as well. Uh, the voice of Veronica Klaus is here tonight, your presence. Thank you, Veronica uh, Klaus, for being here. The Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence, thank you for indulging with us tonight. We will hear the wonderful voices of our San Francisco Boys Chorus. Thank you for your voices tonight. And of course, all the residents and youth participating in tonight's crane readings. Thank you for being here as well. And thank you, Supervisor Wiener and all the other officials from the city family for being here tonight as well. Uh, you know, I also want to thank uh, the small businesses that continue to show their uh, wonderful contributions uh, to our city. Uh, tonight, uh, we have some special treats that are offered by Patchy's Pizza, uh, Bizu Bistro, the First Crust Restaurant and Bar Lounge, I'm sure some of you know that one, Hot Cookie, and of course, sandwiches from Ike's Place. Thank you very much. Uh, I am, as you know, proud to be the mayor of this great city. And I also want to share with you uh, that during these times, we're not the only ones that want to share our humanity. Uh, you know, having been uh, this year to places like Cork, Ireland, or Paris, France, Beijing and Shanghai, China, or Seoul, Korea, or most recently Bangalore, there's a lot of people in the world that want peace, they want prosperity, uh, they want equality in their lives, they want to be able to be successful in their lives. And, this symbol that we have in San Francisco is very special. Everywhere that I've had a chance to go this year, people praise the people of San Francisco for leading the way, for articulating humanitarian causes, uh, for being a leader in every respect. So uh, that's why I come back here from these trips, and I'm even more proud of the people of this great city. You know, we are celebrating on the heels of the Supreme Court rulings and Prop 8 and Doma in last June. And we continue to celebrate the thousands of same-sex marriage couples in our city and across our state. And we don't take that for granted. We know and remember those times when that equality wasn't there. We feel it. That's why these days are so special. And I want to again thank Mayor Newsom in 2004 for taking up that leadership so boldly in this city. And now, after that leadership that caused such a stir here, 15 other states joined California in recognizing this is the right thing to do. Well, that was another significant step for equality for everybody but we're not gonna stop there. We're gonna stop until there's full equality for every American. And this year, we launched the first LGBTQ Connect to focus on addressing the problems of homelessness and the need for shelter and specialized services in our LGBT community. And we have to make sure that this holiday season and every day, San Francisco remains a world-class city with a world-class heart for everybody for the 100%. This holiday season and leading up to Martin Luther King Day and January 20th, we'll redouble our efforts to support organizations that uh, are important to the fabric of our social network, uh, who support our veterans, our homeless, those in need of shelters and meals and essential human services. Uh, so I encourage all of you and all of our residents and businesses to continue supporting our Seasons of Giving campaign and giving whatever you can, canned foods or non-perishable food items to support our San Francisco Food Bank. And if you have a chance, this weekend, we'll bring snow to City Hall. So please join us this weekend at Civic Center uh, because white with snow and I know there's a kid in every one of you. And if you're not, you can bring the kids with you as well. So thank you tonight for uh, bringing yourselves and your family. And I hope 
uh, that this holiday season will uh, not only bring you joy, uh, but again, to express our wonderful values here in San Francisco. We want to bring more people together uh, to innovate, uh, to create, uh, to provide solutions to the world's problems, to our own San Francisco problems. And at this time, I would like to uh, welcome uh, the Honorable Masato Watanabe, our Consul General from Japan, and he'll provide a few words before we exchange our crane wishes. Uh, Consul General Watanabe. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm a brand new Consul General of Japan who just arrived from Tokyo a month ago. It is a pleasure for me to join you on the evening of this eighth annual World Tree of Hope celebration here in the great city of San Francisco. I would like to thank the Rainbow World Fund for all your efforts in bringing together the special event again. Mayor Lee for having me tonight and the San Francisco Japanese American community for your continued support in uniting various communities. I would like to take a moment to remember a great man, Nelson Mandela, who embodied hope throughout his life. The world, the world will always remember how he did so much, not only for his own nation of South Africa, but also inspired people worldwide to aspire toward peace and equality. Now, last week marked the 1,000th day following the earthquake and tsunami of March 2011 that devastated eastern part of Japan, including the city of Sendai, where I was born and brought up. The theme of tonight's celebration, hope, continues to be one of the essential components on the road to recovery in Japan. Hope has driven and sustained the Japanese people. Hope has been offered by our international friends in their efforts to support Japanese people. And today, hope continues to inspire all of us in Japan to continue, to continue the efforts to bring help to those who are still suffering from these tra tragic events. Now Japan is on its way to recovery, and I want to convey my deepest appreciation once again for your continued friendship and compassion. Now, origami, literally meaning folding papers, have been an important tradition in Japanese culture for those ranging from young to old. One of its most recognizable forms is the crane, which has special significance to the Japanese people, and you can see them in abundance here tonight. The story of Sadako and her 1,000 cranes are what gave these birds the significance throughout the world. The crane is a symbol of both the hope of recovery from illness or disease and the hope of world peace. These hopes of recovery and world peace are the embodiment of Japan's current situation, as well as that of all countries and communities throughout the world that are now experiencing devastation or trauma. Our celebration tonight demonstrates our diverse communities' agreement to dedicate ourselves to this hope for recovery, rehabilitation, acceptance, and world peace. I have been told that this is the tallest origami tree in the world. Each crane on the tree contains a wish from individuals around the world. I want very much for our own hopes to flourish just like this immense tree and hope they all will be answered. May these cranes fly high to achieve the dreams of their makers, and may peace and prosperity prevail on Earth. Thank you very much.
Now it is our tradition uh, that we each exchange uh, cranes. And as you know, uh, one of the things that you do with these cranes, as taught by Linda and Karen and Jeff, is that you write your personal wish uh, on that crane. And so uh, in the act of hope and peace, we hereby exchange our wishes for a better world. Council General. Somebody pinch me. This beautiful room, all of you, the music we've heard today, these inspiring words, we are really, we have more in common that we have than is different about us. We with you. It's, it's now my pleasure to bring up Supervisor Scott Wiener. He's our District Us 8 representative, and I just recently lit the holiday tree in the Castro with him, and here we're lighting another tree right here in City Hall. Welcome, Scott Wiener. Good evening, everyone. So there are a lot of great things about coming to work in this beautiful building uh, every day, and I feel honored uh, to do so. Uh, coming to work, and in addition to this beautiful building and all the beautiful people here, getting to be with this beautiful tree every day, our World Tree of Hope, it's just amazing, and it's a great time of year. And we have so much to be hopeful about uh, these days in San Francisco and this country. When we think about our increasing access to health care and more and more people without insurance who are now getting insurance and able to get good health care. When we think about our strides towards marriage equality, as the mayor mentioned, and what really gave me a lot of hope was a few months ago, just a great example. Uh, these two young men came here from Florida to get married. Uh, one is a, an officer in the Navy, uh, and he and his now husband are stationed in Florida and they were given official leave, marriage leave, from the Navy to travel here uh, to get married in City Hall. And I'll tell you, that gave me a lot of hope uh, in the future of our country. But we have challenges, too. Um, there are way too many people uh, in this city right now who are struggling, who are struggling with their housing, um, who aren't quite sure what the future holds for them, given how expensive everything is in this city. And there are a lot of people struggling, and, and that is a major, major challenge that this city needs to meet, particularly around our seniors, um, our youth, and making sure that they are stable and that they have a life uh, in this city. But I know that we can meet this challenge, and I have hope that we will meet that challenge. This is a city that whether we are building the Golden Gate Bridge or spending the last 30 years fighting HIV AIDS, this is a city that knows how to get things done, and so I have a lot of hope. Happy holidays, everyone. These politicians are not speaking long, are they? They know we're on a time frame here. Well, our next opportunity is to read some of the wishes from the tree. Now, some of them are from children that are hardly legible, but their wishes are sincere. Some of them are from sophisticated people with lots of money, and they're long notes, and they still want more. I don't know. But <laughs> there are wishes nonetheless. I have a wish up there. Many of us have wishes up there. The first wish I have the privilege of reading, however, is from Democratic leader Nancy Pelosi. Thank you to the Rainbow World Fund, Mayor Ed Lee, and San Francisco's diverse communities for gathering wishes from children and people around the world as a gift of hope and peace through, through the holiday season. Super Typhoon Haiyan was strong, but the people of the Philippines have proven themselves stronger. Our thoughts and prayers are with the victims, their families, and the survivors working to pull their communities back together. And the United States will do all we can do to help those in need. With severe weather becoming more intense and frequent and bringing devastation to countless lives, my wish for 2014 is that Congress work with President Obama to address climate change before it is too late. Signed, Nancy Pelosi, member of Congress. And now we have some other wishes that can be read by 
individuals. We have a, a, a student of George Washington High School, 17-year-old Annie Wong, come on up here, and Betty Sullivan and her partner Jennifer Viegas, publishers of the San Francisco Bay Times, the paper whose front cover has a picture of the World Tree of Hope, this issue, and inside there's a centerfold feature. Please come on up and read your wishes. Donna, it's so good to be on stage with you again. Merry Christmas to you and happy holidays and all of those other celebrations that we observe. Uh, we're delighted to be here. We're going to share with you some uh, wishes that are already on the tree. We'll read the wish and then tell you who submitted it. The first one, my wish is, my wish is for each of us. My wish for each of us is that we discover our power to create the world we want. Solutions are known. Our genius is proven. May we shed feelings of powerlessness and walk with bold humility, trusting our best selves as we join with others in common purpose. Hope is contagious. Francis Moore LePay. I wish for a world where all people are treated with dignity, respect, and equality, no matter who you are or who you love. Hillary Clinton, former U.S. Secretary of State. I wish for a world of no limit to human performance and one of relationships based on the beauty of consistence, love, trust, honesty, and coherent spirit. Mustafa, age 41, Ogun, Nigeria. I wish for gay and lesbian families to be treated the same as other families. Wyatt, age eight, from San Francisco. In honor of my friend Jeff, who passed away, I wish for help and hope for those struggling with diabetes. Ted Pyle, age 43, San Francisco, California. I wish love to all of those in search of it. Courtney Cox, actress. <laughs> May the Lord assist President Obama in achieving universal health care for every American. From Robert Nardell, age 54, in San Francisco. I wish for a world for our children more just, more fair, and more kind than the one we know now, President Barack Obama. My wish is that all can live in a world where nonviolence is the norm, resources are shared, and all are treated as human beings, regardless of race, gender, and sexual orientation. Marie of Mexico City, Mexico. I wish this tree to become a reality bringing peace love, understanding, and tolerance to the global community. Mohammed, 31 years old, from Laramie, Wyoming. And we want to thank Linda and Karen and Jeff for inviting us, and also our artists who created the front page of the Bay Times newspaper with the Tree of Hope, the World Tree of Hope. Abby Zimberg, we thank Abby. And a, a special wish also for good health to all of you. We have a few members of our team who have some health issues right now and just want to send our thoughts out to them. So we wish all of you good health, happiness. Thank you. Yes, we're going to light the tree eventually. Hold on. Isn't it beautiful just as it is? I'm telling you. It is a gorgeous tree, but we need a little bit more music, I feel like. Do you, do you agree with me? This is going to be very special music, though. It's from a chorus that's only joined us uh, one year before. This will be their second appearance. So are they coming down the stairs? They are. Oh, my Lord. Those are little Donnas coming down the stairs. This is, for the second year in a row, for the World Tree of Hope, the Chinese American International School Chorus. Give them a big welcome.
We're not in Kansas anymore. Let's hear it for this wonderful chorus. You guys are great. Are there parents out there too? Where are the proud parents? Make some noise. They're just so cute, I can't take it. Uh, were we ever that innocent? I think we were, but that's part of what ho the holidays are all about, the innocence of youth. I mean, that is an incredible gathering. One more big hand for this special, special chorus. I do want to thank some people. I did thank the uh, Delancey Street Foundation for the tree. They provide that. I mean, it's a wonderful gift to the city. Let's hear for, for Delancey. And very shortly, you'll be enjoying food after the lighting of the tree from Bisu Bistro, from Paxi's Pizza, and from Hot Cookie. You'll be enjoying wine from First Crush Restaurant Bar and Lounge. I'll tell you a little bit more about them as we get closer. We also have lots of volunteers here tonight that have helped out with this huge project. You can imagine it takes a lot of people to get these kids up and down the stairs. Dr. Jones, you've got a lot to follow right here. <laughs> anyway, we, we are going to continue with the program one minute, but uh, we will have the refreshments. Is it over here? Where, which, this light court over here. So right afterwards, enjoy food here, and we'll have continued music from Veronica Klaus and Josh Clip. So thank you. Thank you, Chorus, for being here, and all the parents for supporting them. Uh, you know, music is not in included in a lot of schools anymore, and I just think it's a wonderful way to express yourself and find the beauty of music at a young age. Um, we're going to continue now with our speakers, and boy, we are in the presence of history here tonight. At the last, you know, we, we try to get different celebrities who are in town, different people who have something to relate to the Tree of Hope, and today we are so privileged. Let me introduce, after we've already had the mayor here, we've had supervisors here, but now we have our next speaker, civil rights pioneer, Dr. Clarence B. Jones. Doc, Dr. Jones was personal attorney and an advisor to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. during the height of the Civil Rights Movement. Dr. Jones contributed to many of Martin Luther King Jr.'s speeches, his most significant speeches, including the I Have a Dream speech. Dr. Jones also smuggled out from the jail Dr. King's handwritten response to the eight clergymen who publicly denounced the Birmingham protests. That writing was distributed nationally as Letter from the Birmingham Jail. He is the author of What Would Martin Say? and Behind the Dream, the making of the speech that transformed a nation. He is a visiting professor at the University of San Francisco and scholar in residence at Martin Luther King Jr. Institute of Stanford University. What a privilege to have you here, Dr. Clarence B. Jones. Wow. Those children, huh? First of all, let me just take a brief moment. I want to uh, acknowledge the presence of Dr. Mary Wardell Gadusi, who is the vice provost at the University of San Francisco. She, along with someone you probably also know, Dr. Joseph Marshall, are most responsible for me being here in San Francisco. And then, <clears throat> and then the lady that has to, uh, the lady ha that has to endure the craziness of living with a speechwriter and a professor, uh, Ms. Uh, Lynn Walters, my wife. So thank you so much. This, this tree and event is created and sponsored, as you know, by the Rainbow World Fund. It is intended to inspire hope and to encourage people to think about what we would like for the future of our world to be and to take action to make it happen. I am aware that this ceremony has been inspired by the story of Sadako Sasaki, the young girl mentioned earlier, whose journey and death several years ago, the journey and her death years ago followed uh, uh, the bombing of Hiroshima. 
We are here today also in celebration of the legacies of Nelson Mandela, Martin Luther King Jr., and San Francisco's own beloved Harvey Milk. The, me the message of the Tree of Hope and the Rainbow World Fund is, that same, is the same as that of St. Augustine and Pope Francis. St. Augustine reminded us that hope has two beautiful daughters, anger and courage, anger at the way things are, and courage to make sure that they become what they ought to be and not remain the way they are. Mandela, King, and Harvey Milk's message to us at this time in our country, in San Francisco, at this place, at this lighting today, is not very complicated. It is very simple. There is nothing in all the world greater than freedom, human dignity, and self-respect. They say to us that they would rather be a free pauper than a rich slave. It is better to die in abject poverty with one's convictions than live in inordinate riches with lack of self-respect. For what does it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Pope Francis recently said, in commenting on globalization, how globalization had brought with it a culture where the weakest in society suffered the most and often those of the fringes fall away. The Pope asked this simple question. How can it be that it is not news when an elderly homeless person dies of exposure, exposure, but it is news when the stock market loses two points. To this we say, no, no, there is a better way, a way of love and reconciliation, a way in the legacy of Mandela, King, and Harvey Milk. And for those among us, and I don't think there are many among us here, for those of us among this place remotely who still may have difficulty in accepting without reservation the lifestyle and, 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 and hopes and dreams of our LGP, LGBT brothers and sisters, I remind them that we are all created in the image of God, and God and as I've said sometime to my some of my conservative African-American ministers who have opposed same-sex marriage, I said, hold on, brothers. God must really love LGBT people, because otherwise, why would he keep creating so many of them in his image? Huh? So, in the spirit and legacy of Milk, Mandela, and King, la luta continua, la luta continua, the struggle continues. I am delighted to be here, and I am here to express all the possible love that a man going on 83 can express to this wonderful, wonderful city that has become my home, and I am so very, very proud to be a member of your community. Thank you. There's where the quotes from tonight will be, from that speech. Let's hear it again for Dr. Jones. Thank you so much for being here with us. All right, we're coming close. We're getting close. Uh, this ceremony would not be complete without our traditional blessing of the tree by the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. Now, you're familiar with them if you've lived in San Francisco for a week. You're certainly familiar with them if you've lived here longer. They are here tonight, represented by two of the nuns, and since their founding in 1979, they've devoted themselves to charity, 
community service, the promotion of human rights for all, diversity and spiritual enlightenment, and also a whole lot of fun. Here are the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. Thank you. On my left, Sister Rosemary Chicken. You can applaud. I'm Sister Zsa Zsa Glamour. Merry Christmas to you all. And we're barely in the Christmas season. I want to give a plug to uh, Easter because this coming Easter uh, 2014 is the 35th anniversary of the, San, of the San Francisco Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. You can applaud for that. <laughs> so um, I have a Christmas gift for all of you, and it is a chill pill. So I want you to repeat after me. C is for community. H is for health. I is for indulgence. L is for laughter, L is for love, and what's that spell? Now this time say it very, take a deep breath and, re, and say it very slowly, <gasps> chill. Once again, <gasps> chill. Now take that chill pill, but don't bogart it, <laughs> spread it around. Repeat after me, one joy. One love, one joy, one love, one joy, one love, Mazel Tov. Thank you very much. Merry Christmas and please donate to the Rainbow World Fund. Imagine if we all had big skirts on how long this program would be. Okay, we're ready for our final speaker and she's the one that's gonna help us light this tree. It's time to do that. So let's bring her on. This is another very special guest. We never know who we're gonna get at the last minute. We've had Dame Edna, we've had Rita Marino, and today we have a very special guest. We're honored to have Anne Lamott, an international best-selling author. She's written seven novels, including Crooked Little Heart and Imperfect Birds. She's also written several best-selling books of nonfiction, including Operating Instructions, a journal of my son's first year, and Some Assembly Required, a journal of my son's first son. Her writing is laugh out loud funny, ruthless, and honest. Anne's a progressive political activist. She's been honored with the Guggenheim Fellowship and inducted into the California Hall of Fame. Her newest book is Stitches, a handbook on meaning, hope, and repair. Tonight we also have with Anne her son Sam, where are you Sam? And her grandson, Zach, Jax. They're here tonight in the audience. We welcome Anne Lamott to come forward and share a message of hope and then lead us in that countdown for the lighting of the tree. Please welcome Anne Lamott. Thank you. It is a beautiful, shining, stunning San Francisco night, and I'm so honored with Donna to light the tree. Um, my older brother said, did you know you're going to be following 50 adorable children, which I didn't. I can sing Jingle Bells, too. Uh, and then my, um, my son said, be sure to ask Mayor Lee to, uh, that, to tell Mayor Lee that our hope is for more affordable housing. <laughs> so. So hope is who we are, hope is what we are made of, and hope is why we were made, all of us, each one here in God's image. Hope begins always in the darkness. It begins in the darkness of epidemic, and it begins in the darkness of tsunami and addiction and bigotry, but God is bigger than anybody's bigotry or prejudice. And hope is that stubborn conviction that if you just show up and do the right thing and get the thirsty people water, that the, the dawn will come. And we are living in the dawn in San Francisco. It gives me life 
every day. My son lives here, my grandson was born here. I was born here at Children's Hospital where I believed until I was about 15 that all children were born. Um, we thank the LBGT community. You have given us ourselves back. Yes. And this tree and this night are, and the radiance are the most precious gift the LGBT community could ever share with one another. The belief in each other, the belief in the, in the, the, belief in the preciousness of each one of us, whether we're in glitter or pinstripe, and in each person's beauty and value, and that radiance here is quantum, and it will go out with you tonight like fairy dust and it will light a very dark and very cold world that is, ex it will shimmy out into the world because we were here tonight in, in a, in a t era and a time so needful of peace and prayer and warmth and multicolored hopes and dreams and blessing. And that is my hope for each of you, that you feel the blessing. You are not hungry for what you're not getting or going to get on Christmas. You are hungry for what you're not giving. So give it forth. Someone said, someone said that hope encourages the good to reveal itself. Hope encourages the good. And I look in your faces and I see hope and I see truth and beauty and I see equality. And so let us go out there tonight and let there be light because we gathered here today. And let it begin with each of us and let us bring that light to the very, very cold and homeless people on the streets of San Francisco. And just thank you, thank you, thank you for giving me me back. And thank you for the incredible blessing of the World Tree of Hope. Now I think we're gonna count down to the lighting. Come here. Immediately after the tree is lit, we'd like to ask all the speakers who are here to assemble up here. We'll do a group picture. We always miss that. We don't want to miss that this time. So we're going to do the countdown. Remember afterwards, Josh Clip will be singing, Veronica Klaus will be singing, and you'll have a party till 8 o'clock with food next door by Paxi Pizza, by Bisu Bistro, and by Hot Cookie, along with wine from First Crush. Did I thank everybody? <laughs> so, you ready? Yes. We usually start from 100. Okay. But we're going to start from 10 tonight because okay. they look anxious. Okay. Are you ready up there? 10, 9, Nine 8, eight seven, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Love it. Oh, beautiful. Thank you so much. I love your energy. I'd like to get some of it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All right, isn't that a beautiful tree? With the speakers, please come up and get that picture if we could. Thank you. Um, we'd love for you to stay and enjoy some music, enjoy some food and uh, refreshments. Thank you to all the volunteers that made this happen tonight. And thank you, City Hall, for being here for us, for the people to celebrate events. I want to thank our, my friends for being out there too. Alexis, thank you for joining us today, all of you. We're going to take a picture here and then go up and see the tree, get pictures close up, and enjoy the rest of the party till 8 o'clock. Thank you, World Rainbow Fun. Thank you.